Hi, I'm Xin Reizhen. Hi, I'm Dong Chaofeng. Hi, I'm Jia Xuan Kan. I will present first. Welcome to our final presentation. Today, we are excited to introduce an exciting research and development project, the Optical Resistor Identifier Scanner, also known as ORIS, a reliable camera-based scanner for the identification of axial leaded resistors. This project is hosted and sponsored by Dr. Steven Newson, who is also our client. Axial leaded resistors are the most common resistors we use in the university. It is challenging to those people who need to identify, sort, and recycle the resistor with the resistance and the tolerance. Most of the time, people need to identify the direction of the color band, examine the size of the resistor, and refer to the color code table to determine the resistor. Oris uses machine learning techniques along with an embedded system to overcome the issue and provide a stable and convenient way to identify the resistor. The entire product is designed to have a lightweight and portable size. The expectation and the outcome of the ORIS project is that to develop a camera-based resistor scanner capable of identifying axial-leaded resistors use the standard color code with a minimum accuracy of 90%. That also has a fairly usable and responsive GUI with a minimum refresh rate of 5 frames per second. Additionally, the device is capable of storing previously scanned resistors as a record and sharing that record to an external device. The ORIS will ideally be used in many scenarios, such as the electrical lab in the university, the per your personal workstation at home, and other situations where you need to know the specification of the resistors rapidly. Also, unlike other products, ORIS is designed to be robust, high performance, and low cost, and it can operate in various scenarios with high detection accuracy. Next, I will let Dong Chao walk you guys over the basics of the ORIS. Thank you, Jiaxuan. I will show you the appearance of ORIS. As you see in the screen, we have the ORIS system prototype here. The LCD touchscreen is placed beyond the Raspberry Pi and connected through the GPIO pins. The camera module is installed inside the scanner head and connected through the camera serial interface port. The white base is the scanning platform and is supporting the scanner arm. You also may find that there is a groove right on the middle of the base. It is a convenient design for the placing resistor. The scanner head is pre-aligned to the groove, and it can reduce the time to align the resistor to the scanner head while scanning. The scanner arm is 360 degrees adjustable. Now, we look at the graphic user interface of ORIS. We have the live video stream windows for the detection response and two control buttons for further functions. Inside the configuration menu, we can switch on and off for the record sharing HTTP server, and we can choose to clean up the previous record if necessary. After the success of detecting the resistor, we will have two options on this edge. We can choose either to save the detection result and continue to scan the next resistor, or just continue without saving. Next, I will show you the usage of ORIS. ORIS can be used in many scenarios. For example, I need to build a circuitry for the project with some resistors. I have a bunch of resistors, and I want to pick the right resistor quickly without causing too much time on the interpreting the resistor color code. I take one of the unknown resistors and place it on the growth of the ORIS platform for the detection. I may need to give a little bit adjustment to the position of the resistor for the best detection performance. The detection may cost a second to a couple of seconds. During the detection, we can see the live detection result on the screen which will show the detected color band and their detection score. After the ORIS successfully identified the resistor, you will display the result page which includes what you see for each color band, the resistance, and the torrent of the given resistor. I can verify what ORIS see by a quick visual check on the resistor to ensure that all the color bands are detected correctly. Now, I can choose whether to save the detection result for the further retrieval or just continue to the next scan. In this case, we can see the ORIS correctly recognizes all the color bands on the resistor and gives us the right result. Now, 
if the register is played incorrectly on the platform. The always still attempt to interpret the resistor, but after it has acquired all the color bands, it will find out that the register is invalid and notify the user. If you want to scan the cut tape resistor, which has multiple resistors with the same color bands attached by tape, we can place the resistor on the platform as usual. We can see the always correctly recognize all the color bands on the resistor and give us the right result. Currently, we have only demoed the always in its focus mode with this tiny few of you. But in case we want to have more freedom placing the resistor on the platform, we can change it into normal mode by a tap on the screen. This allows us to easily scan a single resistor. Next, Shenmue will demonstrate additional functionalities of the Oris to you. Thank you, Zhongxiao. Now we will see if the system is able to detect the resistor correctly in a more complex environment. For example, when the environment has low intensity light or some other interference. Here, we will simulate a low light environment by carving up the Oris's camera. Now we place the resistor on the platform as usual. We can see the Oris system is trying to detect the resistor bands. Due to the poor light source in the room, the Oris is struggling to identify the color bands. However, as we can see, after some attempts, the Oris still successfully acquired the correct resistor color bands and produced the right result. So far, we have tested different resistors, got the result, and that is it. But what if I can memorize the resistors previously scanned? Here's what the record sharing HTTP server becomes handy. Here, I will use the configuration menu to clean up the history to just give us a fresh starting ground. Then, I will scan a couple resistors, obtain the result, and save it into the system. Let's scan four resistors. Now, I want to retrieve the result from previous successful detection. I will turn on the HTTP server switch in the configuration manual. And then make sure the external device I want to use is connected to the same wireless network as the ORIS. Here, I use my laptop to visit the HTTP server. As you can see, the history of successful detection results is shown on the page. I can read the resistance and tolerance of the resistors I just scanned. Also, I can check the detection screenshot, which is what Oris sees and recognizes in the system. If I want to search the results with a specific date or time, I can use the search function on the page. For example, if I need to search the, the resistors I scanned at 3.56 today. I can use search and enter 3.56 in a 24-hour format. And then I'll be able to obtain the resistor scan at that time. If I need to scan further for resistor scan on April 3rd, which is the only ones we got, we can enter And get, and get those results. If we need to return to the home page, we can do an empty search, which will get us to the initial page with all the detection results again. Next, I will turn you guys to Jia Xuan to wrap up our presentation. Thank you, Xuan Rui. So, what worked? Overall, the Oris prototype is effective as it achieved most of our functional requirements set it out before. 
The first two points are the Oris is able to identify the resistance and the tolerance of the given single resistor or the cut tape resistors. It can even identify when there are some variations in the lighting conditions. Third, the Oris can be interacted with by the user with its fairly responsive graphical user interface. Fourth, after the user obtains the detection result, the Oris is able to help them to save the detection record. Hence, the user can retrieve the record by using an external device in the future. Last but not the least, the final size of the Oris successfully meets the requirement, which is less than 30 times 30 times 30 cubic centimeters. Now, let's see what didn't work. The Oris prototype satisfies all the functional requirements, but some performance requirements still need further improvement. First, the current identification accuracy is about 80% which is lower than our performance requirement of at least 90% under a well lit environment. The Oris prototype is able to scan the resistor with a color, clear color band, but it may return the wrong identification result when the resistor's color bands are tiny, or when the surrounding lighting condition is very limited or with some interference. Second, the current GUI could only achieve on average 4.1 frames per second in terms of video streaming, and displaying the detection results, which is lower than our performance requirement of at least 5 frames per second. This is likely due to our use of Python, which is a high-level programming language that gives us very little control over its memory access and the peri peripheral IOs. Third, the current user experience of the Oris is limited by the heavily text-based GUI. Fourth, the Oris failed to meet the power consumption constraint, which is no more than 5 watts. The current Oris prototype power consumption is estimated to be 12.5 to 15 watts. This is likely due to us running heavy, heavy machine learning inference on the RPI, and the customized circuit board will be helpful towards solving this issue by removing other unnecessary components on the RPI. Finally, the Oris prototype failed to meet the initial cost constraint, which is no more than $100 as its initial cost is $130 for the current prototype. Again, a customized circuit board can be designed and developed to lower the cost of the Oris to solve this issue. Next, let's move on to future work. For future work, we will focus on how to improve the accuracy, performance, and the user experience of the Oris system. Since our identification accuracy does not achieve 90%, therefore, we should increase identification accuracy by improving the object detection model to improve color band recognition. We can increase the size of the training data set to include a large variety of resistors and different surrounding environments, so that the model can learn the appearance of different color bands on differently made resistors under different lighting conditions. By that time, training configurations should be further tuned for the corresponding scenarios. Besides accuracy, we also need to improve the GUI performance. In order to meet a refresh rate of 5 frames per second on the GUI of the current Oris, we can add a machine learning accelerator, such as Coral USB Accelerator, so that inf the inferencing workload can be shifted from the processor on the RPI to the external accelerator. Another method is to re-implement re the Oris software in a low-level language such as C++ instead of Python to optimize the memory access overhead and the fine-tune program characteristics to improve the responsiveness of the GUI. In addition, we have mentioned our GUI is heavily text-based, so we need to improve user experience. We can add graphical elements to help the user quickly interpret the identification results on the ORIS, hence greatly increasing the user's efficiency at using the ORIS. For example, the pseudo resistor, such as the one on the right, which is graphical resistor image with the highlighted band that, that shows the in the result UI, will aid the user in reading and verifying. As well, there is currently no way to change Oris Wi-Fi connection via its UI, but it should be implemented to allow the user to more easily change to a different wireless network. Another enhancement to improve the product is based on the first point, which is improved identification accuracy. The identification accuracy of the Oris prototype depends heavily on generating a well-trained object detection model using a large data set. Thus, an autonomous data collection scheme can be made to automatically collect and label new data sets. 
including training the model to continuously improve the ORIS accuracy. We can take the following step to achieve this. First, if the user thinks the resistor identification result displayed by the ORIS is not correct, they will be given an option to claim about wrongly detected color bands. If the users make the claim, they will be given an option to input what they believe are the correct color bands for the resistor. Similar to the pseudo resistor manual shown here on the right. Next, the suggestion which is the user's input will be uploaded to the cloud server along with the original image of the scanned resistor as new data. Then, after a certain amount of such collection, the cloud server will retrain the object detection model using the new data. The, re the retrained model can then be downloaded by the ORIS and used further to detect new resistors. In conclusion, we implemented the functioning prototype of the optical resistor identifier scanner system using machine learning techniques. This system is developed for the user to identify and record the resistor's parameters more easily, rapidly, and conveniently. ORIS will become a useful tool for those people or organizations who deal with axial-leaded resistors frequently. In the case of our university, ORIS can reduce the cost of sorting and recycling leftover resistors to help reduce the electronic wastes produced in our EC department. Nevertheless, the current ORIS prototype is not free of issues and still needs more future work to be done to reach a product-ready stage. At the end, we want to thank Doc Steven Newsom, our client, for providing the detail and the guidance for the ORIS project. Raju and Steven for continuously support and uh, advising on carrying out the project, and Steve for supporting us with the necessary equipment. We hope you enjoyed our final capstone presentation. Thank you for attending. We will now host the Q&A session.